Music to the culture. African Americans have contributed so much to the world and also here in Western New York. And this month on Community, we're shining a bright spotlight on all of that. And this month, we are on Michigan Avenue, mm -hmm. kind of the heart of the heritage movement where so many historic locations exist and historic events took place. Exactly. We're going to be paying special homage to that archway that's coming. More on that in just a little bit. But something else that's really special, we're talking a little bit about the hair, Pete. <laughs> Whether it's the salon, the barber shop, there's always something going on, a lot of talk. And I'm going to take you and give you a little peek into my personal space. I feel honored. Bam! Girl, what? I'm about to play with you today. Well, that tells you what this story is all about, hair. These two have been styling for decades. I never intended on being a hairstylist. My father and brother are barbers, and so my goal was to go into the barbering industry. But in high school, Stephen Daniels went to BVTC, and he's been a hairstylist for 30 years. Black hair, quote unquote, it's different, but it's not. I look at hair as fabric. Fabric requires different levels of heat and other treatments in order to maintain it. So sometimes with our hair, it may require just a little bit more product or a little bit, a little bit more um, uh, heat. But at the end of the day, I can use every product on the market that has a good foundation uh, of ingredients on any texture of hair. Here, he's doing a feather wrap. Just taking the iron and really moving the hair into position to really activate her layers in her hair. Many African Americans braid their hair. Braids are nice because they last for two to three weeks. A protective style enables us to go on throughout our week and not have to worry about it every single morning. Hersha at Simply Hair Designs loves to braid and come up with unique styles. She's even worked on movie sets shot in Buffalo, including The Purge and Marshall. Stylists also work with funeral homes and in Stephen's case, cancer patients. Well, I actually work with uh, providing cranial prostheses for cancer patients and it gives the opportunity for people, both men and women, to feel restored in the midst of their journey in getting well. And going to the salon is more than just getting your hair done. It's kind of like the pub in the Irish community, isn't it? It really is. It is actually the epicenter for uh, the uh, people to come together and discuss any and everything. <laughs> no, There's no off-limit discussions. <laughs> <laughs> the discussions get get heated sometimes, I would imagine? They get heated all the time. <laughs> there's no, there's never a dull moment. It's where you can let your hair down. There's just no room for um, anyone to be shy in this type of environment. Well, what are you doing to me? I'm straightening out your edges, girl. Jocelyn Winston has been doing hair for 37 years. She started at Peter Piccolo. Every salon has the one who is bluntly honest. I do care if you're sensitive because I try and be understanding and patient. Um, but at the end of the day, I want to make my job as easy as possible and I want to make your hair as healthy as possible. Hair is a science. It is a science, it is a technique, and it is a love. And you have to have all of those things in order to build a clientele. She was a stylist to many of the Buffalo Bills wives during the Super Bowl years and friendships develop. Another one of my favorite moments was watching one of my clients um, be inaugurated into, as a Supreme Court Justice. That was amazing. My favorite thing is watching this little lady right here grow up from a young woman, and I've watched her journey through the end of grammar school, straight through high school, straight through college, through her wedding, Just through do my hair. many, 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 every major event in her life, I have been with her on that journey. And so it becomes more than just client and stylist. It becomes family. Let's put Pete in this equation. If Pete sat down in your chair right now, he'd have a really nice haircut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Did, was that the question? <laughs> How do you treat his hair differently than mine? Well, because his hair is already silky, um, and straight, he wouldn't need, say he wanted his hair flat ironed, he wouldn't need as much heat as you do. The hair. It is making people's lives change through hair, through a different color, through a different cut. The styles, the real talk. Common people to more advanced people can all meet in under one roof. And once you have them in your chair, 
You've got the power. Absolutely. And during it all, I got styled by Bo. The salon is the focal point of the community because it allows you to, uh, to collaborate and to be in harmony with so many people from so many di different walks of life. I have every um, client from a home professional homemaker to your CEO of corporations here in the city of Buffalo. Gigi's Restaurant is back in business. However, this legacy doesn't just live on in the restaurant, but through family. Well, she really is the definition, the true definition of what loyalty, hard work, having a hard work ethic, just passion, and what, what it is that you love to do that has really transcended in our family and in myself. We honor Gigi, the woman, and what she has meant to so many. That's next on Community. Welcome back to Community. Something we love to do here in Western New York, that's eat. And oh, yeah. one place a lot of people like to go, Gigi's. Yeah, Gigi's just celebrated its grand reopening. And while the restaurant is fantastic, there is more to it than just the food, such as the story of its original owner, Gigi herself. Yes, Gigi passed away, but she leaves behind a legacy and we want to celebrate her. Blondine Harvin, Gigi, Goody, a Buffalo legend, a community entrepreneur, 4.30 a.m., she was up ready to work in the kitchen. Gigi was the good boss. Things are good, things are bad, you talk about it. You know, people aren't cast away, they're not fired, and so they remain in the family. The year was 1957 when the restaurant originally owned by Ina Hartman, who left Buffalo to become an actress in Hollywood, was right around the corner from where everyone remembers Gigi's on East Ferry. She wanted to sell the restaurant to my aunt who worked for her, my aunt couldn't afford it, and my mother stepped in and bought the restaurant for uh, some odd $200, $300. That was 1959. Gigi turned the restaurant into a landmark on Buffalo's east side. Originally, Gigi's was known for footlong hot dogs. That was what we were kind of built on. Eventually came the southern recipes, collard greens, cornbread, fried chicken. It took on a real positive cornerstone in the community probably one of the first of its likes in, in, in Buffalo. Small diner, southern soul food restaurant run by, you know, an African-American woman. A look through photos tell a story of movers and shakers, past and present. They always found their way to Gigi's. If you were going into politics, some say, quote, you better go to Gigi's. Even Jesse Jackson was here. What a wonderful place Miss Gigi had over there. Some of the most famous people in the world ate there. Gigi's demeanor was reflected in her staff and it rubbed off on those she served. Customers would come there at breakfast, lunch, and dinner um, and, and just knew that they could talk to someone when they needed to talk to someone, good, bad. I, I remember when um, there were bad times and customers knew they could come in there and they would have the ear of the server um, and, and really um, be cheered up or get advice. In 2015, a fire destroyed Gigi's on East Ferry. Completely numb, I haven't slept. So all I wanna do really is just crawl into a corner right now. That was Gigi after the fire. We talk a lot about how it affected our community, but what most people don't know, it, it, it affected our family. It affected me um, and most likely, most, uh, most certainly my grandmother because the restaurant was her life. I mean, she had a, a little bit of life outside of the restaurant, but the, Gigi's was our family, is our family, and will forever be our family. She should know. My grandmother is the famous Miss Gigi Blondine Harvin, and she's the owner of Gigi's restaurant, um, and I am her first granddaughter. And now, the new place inside the Northland Training Center. Gigi got to see it, but not the grand opening. The menu, scrumptious, gumbo, waffles and chicken, fried green tomatoes, and a soul bowl. It's gonna be quite different from an aesthetic standpoint, but from a spirit standpoint, I think people are dying to get in here and, and relive Gigi's again. Her granddaughter will help carry the torch. Her not being here with us physically is quite emotional. So just to have a little reminder of her, I do have on her watch, um, one of her lovely watches that she wore from time to time. And I also have a necklace 
with the cross just to remind us of her faith and her hard work and integrity throughout the years. She really is the definition, the true definition of what loyalty, um, hard work, having a hard work ethic, just passion in what, what it is that she loves to do. That has really transcended in our family and in myself. And take another look at the new Gigi's. It's family, it's friends, it's community. It's um, all wrapped into one. I mean, this is a homecoming, um, not only for um, my grandmother's life, but the, the, the restaurant. She was just this person who was a godsend to her that uh, she's unbelievable. She's my hero. I love all of you. I'll be back, guys. <laughs> Buffalo's beloved Gigi died in January. She was 80 years old. Is the wind really blowing? Or did God just exhale a moment? To me, the spice of life is words. So I like to play with them a lot. Anything that brings words together and can kind of, you know, infuse you with a message that's life changing is what I really love. Is the sun really setting? Next on Community. Meet this talented singer-songwriter with rich musical roots in the Queen City. Does the willow tree hang low, or does gravity pull it slowly where it shouldn't be? From jazz to hip hop to R&B, gospel, African Americans have really had a role in creating some of the most popular genres of music. Yeah, and the Colored Musicians Club, great backdrop for this piece because music is certainly in the backbone and the heartbeat of the community. And that statement holds true for local singer Kamira Lattimore. And after speaking with Kamira Lattimore, she will tell you that music has really been a part of her life almost forever. You Lattimore sings and she says it's been a passion for a long time. Both of my parents are mu musically inclined. Uh, my father passed when I was nine, but he was a, he was an incredible singer. Um, he sang in a group called Process and the Do-Rags, which was, which was a group based out of Buffalo and they were produced by uh, Rick James. I'm a At age 33, Kamara's gift is strong. She knew from the age of seven that she wanted a career in music. Straight out of high school, it happened. I talked to a couple people. I did background vocals for a lot of people, and then I also um, sang in a group called For Love. A writer first, singer second, and that's why her lyrics have a point. Substance, truth, um, authenticity. Because what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. Lipstick is her new song. It's about putting on whatever you will put on on a regular day. So if you put on your courage, you know, if I'm saying basically put on your courage. It's an analogy to put on your courage, put on your bravery, you know, put on your face and, and get through the day to make it through the day. Lipstick. I won't let this defeat me. I won't stay in the bed. I won't let this thing kill me. There's still joy up ahead. Oh, I won't let this defeat me. I've got too much to do. I won't let this thing kill me. Instead, I'll say thank you, because I'm going to pray on my knees. Put your lipstick on. Put your courage on. Uh, put your strength on. Don't allow anything in this life to take you out. Allow it to illuminate you and put you on a platform to do more. I thought I was swimming, but I was deep under. But now I'm climbing up and getting stronger, and I'll put my lipstick on. Kamara will tell you she's an introvert. I like the small things in life. I don't need a ton of money. I need enough to get through. I like purity and happiness and all the things that don't come with the name and the lights of fame. And she likes to see what singing does for others. The definition of power is the ability to provoke change. That's what singing does for me. That's why she also teaches music. Listen to her young student. Mm -hmm. Two, three, and sing. Music is a world within itself with the language we all understand. I see a CB rock. <laughs> with an equal opportunity for all to sing and dance, clap their hands. She wears her father's picture around her neck because he was an intricate part of her life 
And how can you not have her sing a bit of one of his biggest hits? I'll never hear the bells if you leave me. I'll never hear the bells. Darling, I'll never hear the bells if you leave me. And on her big night on stage in the Audit Renovation Church, where she is the music director, she shined. And I don't have to grow if you're planting my feet just to stand on sturdy ground. Coming up on Community, Buffalo's first African American mayor. He's talking black history. And he's also talking about the future, the future of the African American cultural district. And we have the honor and the pleasure of Mayor Byron Brown joining us now and talking a little bit about, you know, history, but also the present and the future because cultural history is a big part of what's happening today in Buffalo. Well, yes, it is. And the history of black Americans in Buffalo is very rich. It's very storied. Uh, it is growing in recognition both nationally and internationally. We are at the Michigan Street African American Cultural Cor Corridor, which is essentially the epicenter of uh, black history in Buffalo. And we all know that, you know, we celebrate each other in, in this community uh, and black history is American history. We know that there is going to be a beautiful archway that's gonna be here in this corridor. And for people coming in, what should they really know and celebrate? We know that for you, you come from a rich heritage, New York City, your roots, and now to come to Buffalo and celebrate it. What is it about black culture in Buffalo that should be celebrated? Uh, well, when you think about black culture, um, from every movement in black history, from the abolitionist movement to the civil rights movement uh, to the Underground Railroad, uh, Buffalo and blacks in Buffalo and people in this community were at the heart of all of those historic movements. Um, Harriet Tubman came through this community uh, to help slaves escape through to freedom. And we have the Michigan Street Baptist we Church. We have the Michigan Street Baptist Church, which was a site along the Underground Railroad. Uh, we have um, the Colored Musicians Club uh, that is the oldest working, existing um, club for black musicians uh, that was first founded in this country when uh, black musicians could not belong to uh, integrated unions. Raising a, an African-American son in the city of Buffalo, did you tell him about the rich history? Uh, absolutely told him about the rich history, uh, brought him to the Michigan Street Baptist Church. Uh, he's been to the Colored Musicians Club. Uh, we've been to Broderick Park, uh, which was a crossing point uh, for runaway slaves. Cultural tourism, history, black history is economic development. Uh, black Achievers is going to be opening a museum uh, which will celebrate over 45 years of Black Achievers being recognized in the city of Buffalo. Sheila Brown is the first black woman in the state of New York to own an FM and AM radio station. So we have to share this rich history. This historic building will become the Nash Lofts right around the corner from the Jesse Nash House. It will become the, the Nash Lofts. It will also um, house the offices of the NAACP. Uh, this is essentially where the NAACP started uh, through the Niagara Movement, which was a 
precursor to the NAACP. So the NAACP will be coming right back to its roots here in the city of Buffalo in this building right, right across the street. Uh, Reverend Edward Nash uh, was um, someone that was active in the Niagara movement. Um, and uh, so it is just an honor uh, to be a steward of this history, uh, to be in a position to be able to invest in this history. And they won't have to hold their meeting in Fort Erie. <laughs> no, they will, they will be able to hold their meetings right here uh, on Michigan Street in the city of Buffalo. Well, we figured we'd wrap things up this month where it's warm and also one of the places the mayor mentioned. Yeah, we're inside of the Nash House and Sharon, tell us why this place is so special on the corridor. Well, for Reverend Nash, he was an icon in African-American history during the time he came here from 1892 until he retired in 19, until he passed away in 1957. So the history of the African-American community is somewhere in this home. Very interesting, very yeah. interesting. That's Buffalo's really rich culture and history here in the city. Absolutely, Black History Month may be the month of February, but here on Community, we celebrate it every month. And so we invite you to continue to join us. And if you have any suggestions, just reach out to Pete, reach out to me. We're there for you online. Again, thanks for joining us on Community.